recording. All right, one sec. Okay, so uh, it's recording. Thank you guys for, for all being here again. For those who have been here before, for those who haven't, thank you for the first time. Um, before moving, moving ahead, just uh, if you can just do a quick introduction of each other. Um, we'll go one by one. Each one just give a quick like couple of minutes introduction. And then we'll start uh, going over like the, the stuff that you guys, you guys mentioned. So Sam, go for it. Okay. Um, Sam Wahab. I worked at uh, Red Bull for seven years and all of them with uh, Anthony Saman and the, uh, the awesome Beirut Jam sessions. And I see that uh, to this day, he has problems getting compliments from people that are well-deserved. Uh, so thank you for, for, you know, hooking this up and continuing to not let a revolution or even a global pandemic to keep you from doing what you do best. So that's just a little, you know, side note. Um, right now I'm in London. Um, I'm a musician, not an artist. So I play music. I was in a cover band a long time ago. Um, and I've always been um, interested in, uh, in the scene. And um, I've worked, my background includes MTV, Showtime, um, and like I mentioned, Red Bull. And, um, you know, I was uh, part of the, the sort of the, the alternative way. I mean, Zeke can help me out on this because he was back in a band called Linger, which I was a big fan of back in the day. So we're proper old school, uh, except he's still going strong and killing it. Uh, but anyway, I, I tend to digress. So that's a couple of minutes about me. I'm looking forward to meeting you guys and hearing some of your music. I'm just here because when Anthony put this together, I thought it was awesome. And I'm, I'm just here as a, you know, a fly on the wall to check out what's going on because I like to stay up to date with what he's doing. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, thank you. Uh, Z? Hey, guys. Uh, my name is Z Karkavi. I am a music producer. I sing, I play guitar, I play piano. Uh, I started in 99, 2000 with a cover band that Sam was talking about. I released my debut album three years ago, uh, and I'm I'm preparing a live live set, an electronic live set now. And I have another project called Trip Beirut. We play also electronic music, like a different kind from from what I do personally. Uh, that's it. That's me. Okay, cool. Uh, Roy. Hey, I'm Roy. I work as a physician in the U.S. and I do music on the side. And this is, you can see, this is a home studio behind me. So I've been uh, working basically on three projects. Uh, our band is John Lebanon and then two other bands and it's just fun stuff. Cool. Uh, Dana? Sure. Uh, Dana Papuri. I'm in Valencia, Spain at the moment. I'm a multi-instrumentalist and a music producer. I released an EP and a few singles. Recently working on my next EP that I'm releasing through exclusive distribution. I do chill electronic music and work at Berkeley College of Music. That's good. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Oh, yeah, I went to Berkeley. So. <laughs> Heard of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Renoir Nemnom. Uh, in Beirut right now, I lived in the States for a while, but uh, right now I'm in Beirut. Um, I'm, I play the Kanun. It's for those of you who don't know it, it's an um, oriental harp. Um, it's a very, very old instrument that I've recently decided to renew and give it a, f a new face, a lift up, whatever you want to call it, um, playing it with pure electronic uh, beats. Um, I also play Oriental, of course, but lately I've been, this is what I've been uh, focusing on more. I've had uh, my first official releases this year with um, two record labels, Café de Anatolia and Shango Records. And I'm working on a um, few more releases this year, I think, and maybe hopefully in the coming uh, months. Uh, that's it. All right, cool. Adam, are you there? Yes. Hello. Uh, my name is Adam Maloof. I'm from New York. I've been living in New York for the last 10 years. I'm actually from Greenville, South Carolina. And uh, my father is Lebanese and he came to the US when he was 18. And uh, I was born and raised in South Carolina and then went to music school in New York and have been living there in Brooklyn for the last eight years, kind of gigging 
and uh, playing with different artists, uh, world music and contemporary music. I play uh, percussion, world percussion, frame drumming, and I uh, study a little Derbecki, but lots of classical percussion and comp composing around those instruments. And um, the cello as well, and trying to co uh, combine combining these different colors that I'm working with. Uh, teaching music often, doing a lot of virtual teaching these days. Uh, before COVID, I was doing fo focused much more in in-person workshops and kind of uh, traveling around. I play this instrument called the hand pan. It's, it's a UFO yeah. steel pan. Yes, I love and, it. Uh, yeah, and I, I've been playing that for the last six years and have really kind of um, begun to specialize on this type of percussion, uh, melodic steel percussion. And uh, yeah, so it's a pleasure to meet you all. And thanks, Anthony, for putting this together. Cool, cool. Uh, today we have Jana with us. Um, yes. Jana is going to introduce herself. Uh, I'm a big fan, as she knows, so uh, I'll leave it to her Hi. to say what Hi. <laughs> I'm Jana Saleh. I'm a music producer and DJ, and also I, I compose music. Uh, I'm based in Beirut. I went to Berkeley, but in Boston. And then I, uh, and I lived in New York for 10 years doing all sorts of things. Uh, in Berkeley, I specialized in music synthesis and from scoring. So I played in all sorts of bands. Um, like the spectrum was really wide. And at some point I did four years in a reggae label called VK Records. And it was more dancehall and reggae oriented. When I came back to Beirut, I wanted to produce mostly uh, local talents and see how the scene is developing. So my first first project was Meshwa Leila. Then I uh, worked with uh, another uh, artist who sang in Arabic, Aziza. And then I went to uh, something a little bit different with Blue Pfeiffer. These three have like really different uh, styles in music. Um, but I think, uh, I think production wise, like it's the same, it's the same kind of like, uh, I have a genre in production that, that, that is the same for every, uh, for every project, uh, even if the music change. That's it. Okay, cool. I think Gerard is signing in. Sorry, I'm just going to get my phone with, just because I hear a lot of messages. I want to make sure that, uh, okay. So Bea is in, uh, Gerard, can you hear us? Maybe, maybe not. Um, oh, there, uh, yes. hey, cool. Sorry for the delay, Gerard. Uh, Sorry for being you're right in it. Uh, just give a quick intro of yourself for, the, for everyone. We're into the introduction part here. So uh, go for it. Okay, uh, hi, I'm Gerard. I'm a drummer since uh, 15 years, and uh, I've played for a couple of bands, as Betaleta, uh, Betacraft Kinematic, Sad Moon, and most recently Ilvi, and I've been doing my music for the past uh, four or five years. So uh, that's my music part, and I'm a, a music promoter here in Lebanon. So I did a festival called Sounds Good uh, last year, and hoping to do more. So that's it. Cool, cool. Uh, all right, so the way this works is I usually send out these emails, as you know, and um, you guys leave some of your, your comments of what, what concerns and stuff you have. The way this works is that it's a really open conversation. It's really, we'll, we'll tackle different, different types of topics and we'll, uh, we'll take it from there. One of the things that, uh, that I spoke to with Jana, because Jana is a producer, so she knows, as, as she said, she worked with Mashro Leila, who blew up at that time because of because of that first album and um one of the first things i want to go through and i'm sure you guys can all uh, give your input here is um first of all as a producer jana i want to know how do you do you choose the artist or does the artist choose you first of all and then i want to know from the artist side i want to know are you guys when you're looking for a producer are you hunting for someone specific or are you hunting for the sound like what are you looking for so uh jana go for it and then i want to see what the artists what all of you guys have had as like stuff with producers i mean when you come to a new country or or a new scene and you want to kind of like uh, check out uh, everything that is happening you're going to do the hunting so 
So the three artists that I mentioned, I actually went to them because, uh, because I was, no, actually Blue came to me. Like one of them came to me, but the other two, I went to them because I, for example, I saw Meshwara Leila playing in Jeffinor and, and I was like, okay, this band is interesting because they're singing in Arabic, but the sound is not. Uh, it wasn't something that was common in Beirut in 2008. Um, so I, I actually went out and talked to them and I was like, okay, I would like, I would like to see where you are and, and, and how do you want to move forward? So I went to them. Usually when somebody comes to you as a producer is that uh, today, I think nowadays, it means that they want to collaborate with you uh, because you have a certain sound or a certain style or because your projects have been successful and they want something that is similar to that. Um, so, so it's, it's, uh, it's, I think it's like, it's, it's, you know, like it's either or, uh, but the more you're established and the more you have a specific sound, the more people want to, want to call you for that sound. But that's also, that's also for me, that's also very strong. And at the same time, maybe it limits you to, uh, to a certain genre of music or a certain style of, of arrangement. Uh, and and keeps you uh, and keeps you there. Um, I tend to be not that type of producer when I work with artists, uh, but but I think it's also very strong because voila, you do have a sound that everybody looks for uh, for for their own voice and their own, own sound, and especially in production, also it's it it uh, it's also it's also it's also like a, you know like musicians, it's also something that is that you're looking for. What, what type of producer you are makes, makes this, you know, makes a certain arrangement and makes a, you know, what, gives you a certain to your music. So um, just this is where I think all of you artists can, can jump in and uh, I'm curious to know because, for example, if an artist, in your case, you were, well, I don't know who that is, um, it was Intuition O and U. Okay, it looks like two more people have joined in. Um, yeah, so just as an artist, as all of you, as in the most all of you are independent artists, when you record, let's say you don't, let's say you don't have a budget, right? Because most of, most of the artists struggle, I do this financially when it comes with their music, you know? So do you guys consider that going to a producer is a luxury or do you consider it as a necessity for your work to, to move forward? As in, um, do you look at it as something that you can create today as a piece of content, which is uh, something I, I always did debate about, or do you look at it as it, it has to sound perfect and you need the right producer to understand your sound? Like, what do you, like how, how do you guys go about it when you're recording? Like, uh, by the way, just unmute yourselves and then remute yourselves for connectivity purposes. So. Uh, whoever wants to just give their input, go ahead. I can tell you from, I'm just going to jump in. Uh, it's easier to find a bad producer than a really good one. That's, I think, what we should watch out for if you really want to, you know, involve a producer in your work and you can't do it, you know, or you don't have the know-how to do it yourself. I've had an experience with someone that's bad and you can tell the difference when, you know, the volumes are out or old school or different. So I agree that it's important if you want to, want help with producing a, a track that you you be careful who you choose and listen to their work before you know otherwise it's just you might as well just do it yourself because sometimes it can you know take your time and not end up with a good result uh, that's that's my experience on that so i just not do it on my own at the beginning but you but the thing just to you say producers don't uh as in the producer who, that you go to, you're more likely to find a bad producer than a good one. As, as an independent artist, that's what you're saying. But what yeah. I'm, but it, the, art, the, the producer could say the same. The producer could say, I'm more likely to find, no, Jana, I don't know. Uh, I you're on mute. You're on mute, Jana, you're on mute. Wait, let me on. Um, you give uh, Roy what uh, you give a very technical uh, term. You said like the volumes are off, etc. But uh, so it depends on what you mean by producer. Um, yes, I agree. There are bad and good, but also there are they they can also 
you can also find the producers that actually suit you and understand the music that you want to do. Uh, and the role of a producer in this case, if, if uh, especially with artists that have that have like a very very specific uh, specific way of doing music, and you have a home studio, so you you work a lot by I'm I'm assuming that you work a lot on your music and a lot by yourself, so you have things that like you have sounds you want to explore, etc. A producer role in this case would be would be an enhancement of of what your message is, and and this is not only technical. This is also this is also arrangement. This is also uh, this is also guiding you through your process uh, on on different levels. Like for example, I spend uh, I spend uh, six months with one of the artists before before even going uh, you know e even recording the first song when actually she had the lyrics and all of that because because I had so many questions for her when it comes to this song. Why do you want it to sound like this? Why do you want to use this instrument on it? Why do you think a reverb on your voice is going to en enhance it or, 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 or not? Like, are you using, do you want to use these effects because, because you think they're better for the song or they're part of the story that you want to tell? So there are different levels. And then, and then, yes, of course, uh, if if some if somebody is you know if somebody is doing making beats for you and and the uh, and and they're too high in the mix, I understand. But like usually for that, you have uh, you have sound engineers to come in, and if you can have a sound engineer, like it's great to have a producer that is also a sound engineer. But like these are two different things. I feel I. I feel like even if you cannot afford one, have some like to have somebody in your life that you can you can you can go back and forth with when it comes to your mu music, even if it's not somebody in the in the business is very important. Like mostly, like the number one role of a producer is actually being a second pair of of ears and and listening to 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 the music itself in general, and then going into the in, into the details. Okay, because that was my next question, because I'm assuming most, I mean, from my, my experience, most of the artists I speak to and I work with are mainly independent artists, which means that they don't have the means to pay for a producer. And that's when the, the question comes in, like, if you're going to a producer, as you're saying, which I never thought of it that way, to go to someone who is your second, you know, like your, your, your other ears, you know, who can who can see, hear and see what, what you can't. So um, I'm not sure if any of you have had any experiences where you feel that the producer has either enhanced your work tremendously or devalued it. If anyone has any like example. Can I yeah. jump in? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Adam, do you want to go ahead? Go ahead, after um, you. I wanted to add to what Jenna said and answer your question at the same time. And a producer and an artist is it's kind of like I like in a re relationship. You either click together or not. For example, Jana can work with Mashrua Leila and brought their project to another level, and they boom. Put me with Mashrua Leila, we will maybe not work out at all together because we have different ears, different training, different liking in music. And and a producer needs to find an artist that suits them and their lifestyle and their personality. For example. If you're someone who needs to party every night, you need to find an artist who also likes the same similar things. Now we can work with different kinds of artists, but it's not the same involvement that we're gonna give as when we find someone we click with and get along with. Um, and yeah, I think that that's, that's mainly it. And producer and engineer are two different people, but if you're an artist starting off and you need a producer, it's like when you need a manager, either find someone who's brand new and is willing to kill for you and really believes in you or like find a producer who's starting up and willing to kill for you or someone who's very well established will take you under their wing but it's not gonna kill for you but it's gonna bring a name to you because you're connected to them in some way and and to add to that like because you you, you gave, gave different example and you and you're talking about artists that just are just are just starting out it's very difficult i think to produce an artist that, that just uh, start out because the vulnerability that they have is 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 tremendous um uh there, there's a lot of things to take in consideration uh, uh their experience being in a studio for example their experience also working with somebody else 
uh, uh, their their willingness and openness to 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 kind of explore different sounds or different arrangements in the music, etc. Uh, um, but like you said, when the synergy is there, uh, then you then then the work starts. Uh, but I I personally don't believe in in and I, I believe in, in, in work synergy, but I don't believe in, in kind of like, uh, you know, like li uh, mimicking the lifestyle of somebody when it comes to production. You have to, you have to put limits, otherwise, it, 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 otherwise like the work doesn't finish. It's, it's counterproductive to mimic, I think, a lifestyle of somebody. Because you said like if, 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 somebody, if somebody is, uh, you know, work at night, etc. Like so I have, I, I work at night. I love working at night, but I'm not going to impose, you know, like a 3 a.m. Uh, a call to someone who. <laughs> no, who I, I'm not want saying it. mimic. I'm saying like you, you do need the, those boundaries because, uh, like, producers we work all day, all night. So right. you want also your artist to be also at the same level as you, who's willing to put in the work while you're working. Like you don't want them sleeping all day and them and like. There's, yes, that's, there, there's that's a level of. Oh, where you need true. to be understand. Yeah. There, there, there is a lot of that. Yeah. There is a lot of like, hey, like it, it's. it's, it's I have, I have real close, where are you? Guys, for, for all of you, actually, how much of your work, when you're releasing your work, or when you're producing your work, how much of it do you create with the mindset of this is something that is gonna get uh, traction on the internet? or some sort of virality. Do, you, do any of you think like this when you release music? Because there's a whole part where today in, in music, some people will create songs specifically for that purpose. When you think of, I, I always mention this for, for those who've been here before, when you think of uh, a platform that's blowing up like TikTok, which has 15 second songs, 15 snippets, second, second of snippets of songs, and that's gaining so much traction and gaining so much, making money for artists as well, and so on and so forth. Do you think that this is, um, does this affect the way you think when you're thinking of producing a track in the back of your head? Are you thinking, I want to produce something to get numbers and likes and whatever? Or are you thinking, you know, like I'm doing what I want and that's what I want to do? Um, just, I, want, I would like to hear from Bea and from Camille because both of you came a bit late. So, uh, yeah, and both of you just, while you're at it, introduce yourselves quickly because we don't have the chance to do that. So, Camille, go ahead. Bea. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Camille. I'm from London. Sorry I came a bit late. Um, but, yeah, in answer to your question, me personally, I don't really do that because I think my music is quite niche. So, I do like R&B soul. So, I know only certain people will listen to it. Um, but in regards to people that make songs for like TikTok and social media, I don't actually think there's nothing wrong with that. Um, at the end of the day, you have, everyone has a right to want to be as successful as they want to be, really. So if you think, oh, if I do this song, it, as long as you're not necessarily selling out on what you're talking about, um, then I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, thinking, oh, I want a song that can be played on TikTok or that people can make dances to and get a lot of um, attention from. So yeah, I don't think, as long as you, as I said, as long as you're not selling out on the meaning of the song and the message of the song, and I don't think there's nothing wrong with wanting to try and get your music out to the to a big audience. If that makes sense. Yeah. Someone was going to say something, Adam. I think. Well, you you really have to consider the medium in which you're putting your music out there. If you know if it's an LP, then you're writing songs. You know you can't compose an album for MP3 and then print it on an LP, and that makes sense. Uh, with CDs, you could have like 16 songs and it wouldn't matter. People would still purchase the CD. You could put as many songs on that CD and you're basically getting the same $10 or $15 for it. But now with MP3, you know, with SoundCloud and Spotify, digital, digital streaming platform, people are really thinking about the numbers next to their, next to their song, you know, a million hits or 2 million hits. It doesn't matter if you have if it's two minutes or if it's seven minutes long your two million hits is going to generate the same amount of income so artists are actually creating albums with 30 second little tidbit songs it's a 30 second song of just some crazy audio thing and then that will play and they'll they'll generate the same amount of income as if it was a 10 minute track that they spent you know seven seven months working on 
You know what I mean? So yeah, because I think creating... it, was a, it was a couple of a couple of years ago. Sam, I remember we, we discussed about this a couple of years ago. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we had that conversation. It was about the death of albums and the, the, the idea that today there was the example, at that time there was an example that Drake dropped an album with 25 songs. And yeah. they saw the streaming number. It was like, I don't know, something like 95% listened to one song and 5% listened to 25. 24 other songs, something ridiculous like that. I don't know what the exact figures are, but it was just showing that like, maybe that's the first step into realizing that the idea of an album per se is kind of disappearing. Um, I don't know what you guys think. I, I, have my, I have my opinion in terms of that and how things work promotionally, which we'll get into, but um, I don't know what you guys think of, of that, the, the idea that- If album, I can, yeah, if I can add to what, um, the conversation I had with Anthony, because um, in my time working with Anthony and, and working at Red Bull, my job was basically a culture marketing manager. So it was to support local acts and local talents in um, whatever their strategy is to try to you know, gain their audience and, and to support them in whichever way possible. Um, and part of what we do is um, I would always keep my eye out on what's going on with trends and try to read the trends because we, I would always come across artists who are trying to do it all. They're trying to produce their music, write their song, come up with their social media strategy, see how they can get their albums out and try to produce it. And because you kind of have to, at least in, in Lebanon, um, be a one-stop shop to get your music out there. And I used to always come across um, artists who are saying, I'm working on an album. I want to wait till the album is out and I want to drop an album. And what I would share with them, and this is advice that uh, I don't know if, uh, how to, I'm not here to convince anyone, but these are just the stats that are out there. Um, we're all aware that social media means trends are, you know, they rise and fall practically overnight. One day you have a mannequin challenge uh, and then you've got Black Beatles as a song that just goes viral. Um, but the discussion I had with Anthony was that singles right now are what sell and what generate um, your sales and your hits because there are very few albums, even for me as a listener, that I listen to from beginning to end. What you used to do traditionally, you'd buy the album you for your two or three singles, and the old formula used to be, you know, you have three songs to finance the album. Um, nowadays, it's attention spans are getting smaller, people are searching for clout, and the best thing to do is if you're going to spend so much time and energy and money and resources on recording 12 tracks for the sake of an album, because that's just how it was, and you're not adapting to the new reality, which is basically of singles and playlists and EPs, if anything, then you might get left behind because if you have a great sound at that moment, you should just put it out there. And I've always been advising people, if you come up with something great, just put it out there. And just, it, it's all about being top of mind. You know, I'm not saying put anything out there, but if you like something, it's a shame for you to sleep on a single or a group of tracks just for an album to come out because nowadays people don't have the time, unless you're a diehard fan of a band, to go and listen to that whole album from beginning to end. And you're giving people decision fatigue when they're flooded with, with all kinds of content that is accessible at their fingertips, whether it's music, whether it's streaming shows, whether it's gaming, whether... So we always had this discussion. And yeah, the, it, was, it was like two or three tracks out of Drake's two al double album, Scorpion, that was like 80 something percent of all revenues that he made from, from that. So, um, but he's from that generation of uh, we want albums. So I would definitely recommend to anyone uh, any day of the week, if you if you want to put your music out there and you want to just get something from it quick, just release singles. And, and I would tell people to abandon the album route. I mean, think of the album as a compilation of your singles once you're done with them and they're released unless you're doing a concept album or unless, you know, it's your thing. But yeah, and basically. also, also like, this is very specific to, to, to music distribution. And as Adam say, like, you can, you can have also gimmick, uh, uh, you can be gimmicky about it and release something that is uh, 30 second snippet and then, and, and then it will take you to uh, another kind of music. But uh, I mean, and, and in the past, in the past, I would say decade, uh, people, 
like the guards have been like uh, kind of experimenting with this. Uh, also, also not releasing only singles, but but quantities of single at the same time. I mean, if you take Beyonce and you take, for example, Lemonade, it's 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 basically it's basically she she dropped an album, but like the the whole album is a hit. Uh, or or even Rihanna when she dropped her album way back when and. and and we're still waiting for the other one. Or even Drake, when he had that great year in 2017 with all the hits, it's, uh, it, it was hit after hit after hit. So, so, so it was more like quantity, but good quality of a, like it's it's more selling. It was more selling kind of like a, a, a person. It was more selling an artist and what he has to say. And that sound was actually if very. I may. Uh, very, very much the same, and and selling the lifestyle that comes with it, etc., and selling the image of this person. So it wasn't it wasn't only about singles, but like it was. I I believe it's another way of 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 making an album in this case because you have to work in this in, in this genre of music, which is more pop music. You you'll have to work on on uh, your image, uh, your tweets, your music. Uh, your entourage and 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 whatever video that you want to put out, not not to spend, not not particularly uh, music videos, but whatever videos you want to put out, so people will be like, oh okay, this is you know Drake, Drake dropped uh, five five songs in a row in, in in one week. Okay, great. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, but um, you know, social yeah. media really changed it for us. Uh, yeah. Before social media, we could wait two years to five years in between every band, Red Hot Chili Peppers album, five years before the next album, or Tool would wait 10 years before their next album, and people would, it would be their highest selling album when it came out. But that's not the case for us. And it's, and we don't, honestly, we don't really need to talk about Drake because a major record label and the way that they do things is not the way that the independent artists are, need to do things. That's so, what I wanted so, to kind of, uh, that's what I agree with you on. That was my only one point that I wanted to mention to Jana. Uh, what you're saying is true. However, the only, the, the thing is, the three artists that you chose are mainstream established artists that are from the physical album era that are basically, they have their fan base waiting. Uh, for the context of this discussion, the artists that I was talking about when I was working at Red Bull are independent and up and coming artists who don't have the record label, who are basically trying to pierce through the clout and uh, trying to pierce through, sorry, the, the noise uh, online. So, right, yeah, so the, 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 you got to stay front of mind. I, yeah. I don't believe that I don't believe that right now quantity uh, like uh, sing, singles do the difference. I think you need to I think you need to drop more than one single right now as an independent artist to be visible. Absolutely. Your visibility it's on one be... song is is is, yeah. is something that doesn't like Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a song a song a month, a song a month or a song and then followed up by a music video followed by the next track and you're keeping people engaged, you know? Because people are not front of mind, then they're going to forget about you within one month to five months. And you've, yeah. if you wait five months yeah, before yeah. your next release, then people forgot about. It. Yeah, take take take, uh, take for example uh, artists who have been like uh, you know like uh, coming out of SoundCloud and ha are are having uh, are having a moment right now. Uh, these guys these guys play all the time. Like they they they. They release they release almost every day new material, even if it's not polished, even if it's not uh, anything like that. But just to just to have a, just to have kind of an audience and create this audience so that when they release something polished, they have you know they they and it's a single they they would have a following with them. Uh, I I am totally with you, Sam, about about like if you have something in your in your pocket, put it out now. In terms of music, uh, but but I th I do believe right now it's 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 also quantity like quantity content, especially that producing music is is getting easier and easier. This is Software I, I, is easier to use, yeah. uh, less expensive than before. Um, you can make it work for your own style. You can make it work for also, you know, like I see uh, like uh, Renoir and Adam and Z are going into something a little bit like Z you're saying you're, you're going into more of a live electronic set. Uh, uh, Renwa, you're using your, your Anun with electronic. Uh, Adam, you're, you're, you're kind of 
you're kind of exploring percussions and melodic percussion and and with electronic or no i don't know if it's with electronic or no but but basically sometimes. like you're, yeah sometimes so basically you're concentrating on things where where you can record you know record yourself at home or use no instrument at all or or mix that mix those sounds because they they are available you don't need a yeah, right. Nirinwa, you don't you do need your anun is such a rich instrument uh, as as is, then then if you add a voice to it or if you add a bed to it, that's it. You don't have to you don't have to, you know, it's not like you're doing string quartet arrangement or you have a drummer and a guitarist and a bassist with you. It's it's something that you can explore uh, by yourself and it can sound very beautiful and, and very, very full. Uh, so, so in that context, like the 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 idea is to is to is to make is is to make a lot of music. It's yeah. to make music every day. Like there's no excuse in this context not to actually, actually, you know, uh, okay. exercise on 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 this thing. And also and also, less, like Sam said, uh, get it get it get it out. It's it's going it's going to sound uh, uh, good enough for people to have you know to be attention. Yeah, They're Billie gonna... Eilish, Billie Eilish is like the voilà. number one kind of star. SoundCloud, the... SoundCloud artist Billie Eilish. You know, and number. her brother produces all of the music, and they do it from their bedroom at home. So they're probably yeah. spending just the the amount, whatever they spent on the MIDI MIDI keyboards and guitars and and software for their computer is all that they're really paying. And then they're, they've are they been able to reach billions of people. Yeah, I would yeah say because they have that synergy, because they, they understand each other, because if, if uh, 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 yeah, like this is, this is he, it. And this he, is he has an invested interest also in the project. And that's a big thing is that you can go out and you can hire the biggest guy. You could, uh, if you have the funds, which if, if you're a full-time artist, you most likely don't, um, you could hire the biggest name, but if he's not invested in your project uh, on an artistic level, yeah. then it's not, it's going to come out uh, subpar. So yeah. what you need to do is that you're much better off finding someone that's in your network and wants to build with you and, yeah. and is going to give you 100% because then they have really something to gain from this collaboration. Last week I was mentioning this during the talk with you. I've, I've been, I'm, I've been vouching for this since, since, uh, I don't know how long that it is today. It is a it's a, it's a definitely a quantity game, definitely. And the reason for that is that it also comes down to the on the word which everyone uses, which is content. And when the thing with content is that you to stay top of mind of people in terms of content, you have two options. It's either you pay for ads and you keep paying for ads and then they appear, or you post quite significantly and it always appears because we all follow. I don't know a thousand people, or I don't know how many hundreds of people, but we don't see what they post all the time. Sometimes you end up seeing the post, it'll be, it'll be written one day ago or 18 hours ago or seven hours ago. So the, the algorithm of all these social media has changed, you know? And the thing with that is that it's, when it comes to releasing music, the, one, of the, the things, one of the things that I'm gonna, I'm gonna test with, a, with an, uh, a, gr a French group that I'm friends with, is uh, they have they have three songs that they want to release, and they were like, "We need you to help us." Blah blah blah. blah. I'm like, "Okay, great." They're like, "What can we do?" I've I've given them a plan, which is on the Monday, but basically just to before that. The context is my this is my thinking again. It's subjective. It might be right. It might be wrong. But I think this this will work. Uh, releasing music, any audio track, any song you release without any video content to accompany it today is like, it's a dead end. I don't mean that for electronic music. Electronic music is different, but when it comes to songs, it's a dead end with, with, no, with no video content. And I don't mean to produce highly incredible video clips. I, I, I mentioned the example a few weeks ago about you can film anything with your phone in ultra slow motion for three minutes and that's your video clip. It doesn't really matter. The, the, the content itself, will, will, if the song is good, it will, it will hook, you know? And the idea is that this, this band has three songs. I've told them to film three pieces of like whatever over two or three minutes to value the song each one. Week one on the Monday, you drop the song 
you put it everywhere you release it on all the streaming platforms you put snippets here and there you upload it on every possible visual platform because your youtube your facebook your instagram your all of them they i, I always again mention this they all offer the same thing they offer video they offer still images they offer followers they offer comments they offer likes they offer reactions they all offer the same thing so you can't cross promote today if you share a youtube link on facebook i, I know it from my friends who work at facebook the algorithm reads it as if it's a virus so they just block your visibility lucky for you you have 10 people who are going to read who are going to see that and that's it each one wants you to upload native content on on the platform so if week one you release that on monday you release that song on tuesday you do the acoustic unplugged version whatever you film it raw done uh day three you go on an instagram live with someone talking about this song you know just a whole one week of basing yourself just on this one track because within if you think that that one track you released on a monday is going to be relevant the next monday it's it's definitely not then the, the Sunday of that same week, you say, oh, tomorrow, new song, bam. You release the, the next song, same process. You do it over again. Then third week, same thing. By the fourth week, you're like, okay, done. And that, no, there's no expectation more than this because right now you can't tour, you can't do anything. So all you've done is you've dropped a piece of content where you're gonna be relevant in terms of your, your audience, getting new people to follow you, this and that, getting some press, asking blogs to write about you, ask, you know, that we all know people who know people. So this, this work, it does its, its little thing. And then once that's done, there's, there's no expectation on you to release new music, but there is an expectation on you to release new content. So then you can start, you can start fixing how you want to release new content. You can start playing around with that. But at least for the music part, as we were saying, if you're going to release one single a month, you can, that's one option. If you have three singles ready and you're like, okay, I'm not going to do anything for the next six months, that's an option. So there's different ways around it. I mean, that, that's how I see it. I mean, this is the way I've just explained it. So I don't know if you guys have any, any input or questions or ideas that you, you think of for this sort of stuff. Well, you can design the a campaign away around the way that you're creating music and releasing music, but then how you're creating it is also a factor because if you're recording an album, for example, I recorded a in-studio video album. So we had a team of videographers in the studio, plus the musicians, and we all played at the same time in the same room, no edits really allowed. So we had to full tracks all the way through and the videographers were catching all the material to then later be edited. You know, it took, you know, what's a reasonable turnaround time for this project? I, I was envisioning something like maybe three months turnaround time in order to be able to for mixing and mastering and rendering and editing the video and rendering it and it ended up more around a year and this is you know a not this videographer is not working for me full time i paid him substantial amount of money in order to do the work but still he's he needs to work another job in order to survive or he's doing other things either way you know then the project is in his hands and in so it became impossible for me to schedule really a uh, release strategy until I had the content in my hand on my hard drive. I've got the videos and all the masters ready to go. And then once you've got that content, then you need to just design a strategy to, to release this, to release this content. It can be a campaign. So it's not, I'm going to release for the next year, just be like in the month of June, I'm going to release something every week either this track or a video accompanying the track or release the music to Spotify and push the Spotify or we release the music to video and, and to YouTube and you're pushing the YouTube link and it's all these separate channels that you need to push almost individually. So you could really break it down in a schedule. Like on Tuesday, I'm focusing on, you know, letting people know about Spotify. My music is up on Spotify, but then on Thursday, I'm releasing this video to YouTube are yeah. you going to put the YouTube on Facebook at the same time as on YouTube or do you put quick, or do quick you do question them for separate? you? Just got a question for you. Would in hindsight, would you have rather do you have access to release one of those tracks? Oh, yeah. No, I've got them all finished now. 
but it took almost a year b between the recording of the project and actually having the the files like on my hard drive finished and you know obviously the guy took like longer than expected but that's probably going to happen if you're doing large scale video projects you know, movies take years to produce movies is it a full album's worth of music what i'm trying to get at is if you're going to do this again would you consider at least the editing schedule to be they give you one song at a time then to wait for the whole complete product and then you drop it as a single in retrospect that probably would have been smarter but we were kind of thinking of having like a full performance video kind of thing like a half hour straight of music before releasing so it so so this is where the genre and actually the aesthetic of the project uh, to, right to, like this, exactly. this is dropping his single but it's a single that uh, that took a year basically to do and this will <laughs> depend on genre of music and 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 what you're trying to do i think like what we were talking before is 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 for more for for uh for, for th this is a project i would i would consider this is like a, this is a whole this is a whole project it's 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 something else to take in you know versus like, a, have versus other like a home produced it's, session it's, yeah it wasn't a, home produced yeah it's 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 a music video project at the same time i mean and you're doing it without edits and four tracks and so for for cameras as well or something like that yeah yeah no? yeah four yeah cameras. and 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 like one shot and etc so you're being very specific uh, with with what you want to do and 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 so th this this is like if you're working on an lp instead of working on a on a on a on a you know on a single in, in this case um, and it depends on the genre of, mu of music. I mean, I don't know, like if uh, you know, if you if you take jazz for example, and 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 it's it's a forty-five minute uh, session, or or even thought of, and it's a forty-five minute session. It's a once it's a one session. Things can take time, but it de depends on the genre. Like you're talking, Anthony and Sam. I I, I believe that you're talking about like rock and hip hop and yeah. R and B and and and. and uh, that's why and I said like not, not electronic music, for instance. Yeah, but but also not ex electronic music or experimental music or yeah. or or even like or even classical music yeah. or 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 things that 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 uh, need time and needs uh, and needs your attention and needs uh, all of that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for example, Z, Z mentioned that he's working on an electronic live set, and that's a whole different uh, ha, that's a whole different thing. And I think it's something that that worked well before COVID up till now. And Lahela, we'll see how the word is going to to develop in terms of live music. But this this is the type of music where you you need to experience at with people life at the time. So, so it's not it's not going to be it's not going to have a lot of uh, 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 clicks online, but it's gonna it's gonna have a lot of audience if they like if they like what they hear, and then the touring comes from that. Like it's a more word of mouth uh, thing, and then afterwards it's it's uh, voila, I dropped my album. Oh, people love it because they saw me live, etc., uh, etc. Et like there's there's. There, there is still like these these two ways of making music and and releasing and releasing music. It's it's the, yeah. That's yeah. Uh, there's, <laughs> there's some of there's some of you in here I want to hear from like your your whether uh, Gerard, Thea, Dana, Kemi, Roy, Z, all of you guys. Like, come on. Hi guys. Yes. I just want to say hi. I'm sorry I was late. I had trouble with my Zoom. A uh, beautiful conversation, and I see a lot of people I know and new people. I'm so happy to meet you all. Uh, just to let you know a bit about myself, I have a background in cinema and production. Uh, I live in Montreal. I'm Lebanese, and since five or six years, I've been doing music and writing. Um, and that's it. So, uh, that's it. <laughs> I, I want to hear. I want to hear Roy, for example. Just so you know, casually, casually, he's sitting there. Roy is a full-time doctor. Just he's casually a full-time doctor who happens to make music on the side, and this is the sort of stuff that, like, tell us. Like, I want to hear. Tell us about like your 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 point of view on this stuff. Whether it's how you promote your project. I mean, his project is called John Lebanon. Uh, first of all, like. Tell us, like, why the name? Did you specifically cho choose Lebanon for your own sake? Like, give the how you see things. I know you release a lot on SoundCloud. I know I, I've seen that. So, um, 
Yeah, it's my day off today, otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, it started, I was like in medical school, it was a joke because someone said that I looked like John Lennon, I had brown glasses. <laughs> And they're like, no, he's look, he's hairy. He's like John Lebanon. He's Lebanese. Like, you know, and it started like a joke. But what I, so my approach is, a bit, you know, I'm blessed that I have, you know, a different job. So I don't think as much about like, you know, promoting, although it's a very important part of, you know, having your music heard. It's, a, but to me, it's more like, uh, it helps me, you know, it's like a hobby. So I do it anyways. And I think it helps to take that approach, like do something that you want to listen to, that you really like, that you are satisfied with, and then someone will like it. It's just a matter of finding that niche. And but uh, I mean, yeah, that's yeah, because it's it's um, I've I've mentioned this a few times because it's not there's no fixed rule for success or for anything like in in any field. There's no there are no rules. Like everything has been broken completely. The whole system. So what, when someone, like I got a lot of people who were telling me, I got a lot of like on Instagram when I did the, the Insta Fest, I got a lot of people and they were like, oh, this is amazing. And oh, this is horrible. And all this, and I'm like, okay, fine. But that's, that's your opinion. It's subjective. Like who are, that's not, uh, it's not for, for me to come and say, no, this is, this is shit and this is great. It's, it's an opinion. So as you're saying, like um, in your case, for example, I mean, I, I know of some people who, who know your music like by heart, like crazy. Like, so it's, it's just, you know, it's, it's cool to know that, you know, that exists. And, and um, yeah, I, can, I totally understand because some, I don't know how many of, who, how many of, of you in here are 100% dependent on uh, being musicians. Uh, if you are, I'm super curious. There's Genoa. Who else is 100%? Like, Dana, 100%. Adam, Demi. All right. I'm Could trying you... to. <laughs> Could we talk for a second about the relevance of recorded music? And, you know, we, we were talking about how, uh, you know, records ended, CDs ended, now no longer the album. We're, we're streaming only now. Yeah. But now since the reason streaming was so great is that you could reach so many people international right so one big benefit of that as an artist is that you can then go to russia and tour or you can go through europe and tour through the middle east and tour through the united states and generate your income as an artist doing that when previously you could sell your records if your records were selling then you can make money and how do you sell more records you go on tour so the same thing with spotify where the streaming and touring were so interlocked in order to build your streams you had to tour in order to tour, you had to have substantial streaming record. Now that touring is out, where do we focus our attention? I kind of feel silly sitting in my studio working on the next hit track that's going to generate me, uh, you know, 40 cents online when uh, maybe we should be focusing somewhere else on live streaming performances, on music video, like content that people can enjoy from their home and finding a way to actually get income, um, monetize that. Look, uh, the way the way I see things as someone who, who works in music and who is um, who's worked as a manager for many artists and who has worked as an agent for many artists is that right now uh, if I told you three months that three months have passed since the lockdown like already it's it's a bit surreal that three months have passed that fast okay. there are I think there is now like I don't know, there's, in Italy, I'll give you the example of Italy. Italy next week, which re reopens concerts to 200 people as indoor capacity and to 1,000 people as outdoor capacity. And that Italy was one of the, you know, number one places in Europe, yeah. Then you have a country like Estonia, which I, I often go to for this specific festival. They're going ahead with it end of August. It's expected to have 10,000 people spread out through the city. Uh, you have in Spain, they're opening up concerts as of end of June. You, have, you know, like, we're, we're almost there. I'm not saying we're there, but we're almost there. And the, the live concert thing, the live touring and so on, it will come back sooner than the doom and gloom of us thinking it's one year from now. Because it won't be one year from now. Because I'm not saying that, um, you know, it's the, I'm not downplaying the importance of, of the virus or anything. 
I'm just saying that when you see how things have started moving three months after there was a, a worldwide lockdown, you realize that, okay, it's, it's moving fast and people need, need it to get back. Like, so that's one thing in terms of just for the mindset to know that, you know, live music is going to come back sooner than expected. I was literally, literally, I was building at the, at the beginning of lockdown. I started building with two friends or three friends, sorry. We started building the, the Arab version of Patreon. We were working on it and we were going full on at it. And then I quickly realized that, oh, people, people have started making money from live stream concerts. And it was very easy for me to realize that now today, for example, this week is, uh, I was planning on doing this with, with artists, but just logistically, I'm not sure how I'm gonna do it, just in terms of payment only, but I'm gonna do a concert on, on Zoom very soon where I'll have three artists, I put them out there, there's a payment process that happens and the artists get the money off that and a good chunk of it will go to a cause somewhere. And this is where I see that people would pay a $5 or whatever, or $10 or $15 or whatever it is. They would pay it if they know that one, they're benefiting, benefiting an artist that they like, that two, the money is going to a cause and that there is a formula around it. I actually think that now for the next six months or whatever, is a time to kind of build your name, build your brand, build your, you know, like just push for yourself on a personal level. I know it feels silly for you in your mind, like to say like, I'm sitting there in the studio and I'm recording, but what for, you know, like I'm gonna record and then I'm gonna release and then what, you know? I, I totally, totally understand this. Usually I would be planning on a performance for whatever I'm recording and releasing. And if I'm not performing around it, then why am I releasing the music? Yeah, yeah, that's, I, I totally understand, but. Just, but yeah. online performances is really awesome right now, actually. Yeah. And there's a program um, called Viewcy, Viewcy.com, V-I-E-W-C-Y. -E it's a new platform where you can embed your live stream from YouTube yeah. and uh, collect donations. And they take 0%. It's 100%. It's a platform by artists, created for artists. 100% of the donations from your event. Plus, you collect the email of every person that comes and watches your event. So if you have 50 people that come and watch, that's 50 emails, plus you collecting donations from them. It's very substantial. Uh, very, some, we did a festival online and it was the Handpan, Handpan, International Handpan Festival, players from 26 countries. Players from Mo 24 hour festival, everyone had an hour set. 26 countries, we had players from Iran and France, Brazil, Russia, Romania, Japan. South Korea and all over. It was crazy. And we raised over 13K. There you go. For, you for go. the, it went 100% to the artists. So yeah. people awesome. really, yeah, they were really engaged with it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 a, I'm a big advocate of things changing at the moment. And I'm kind of glad they are changing in a way because, you know, there needed to be a little reset button on everything on the whole world, in my opinion. And uh, I just think like, for example, there's a thing in the UK, Kemi, I, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a website called Dice. Have you heard of that? Dice, D-I-C-E. -D it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's an online platform that normally what they did initially was they were a ticketing platform. And then during lockdown, they started putting streaming, streaming live concerts and whatever, where it was for free. And what they've noticed is that when they start putting it as a paid concert they started the, the numbers between the free concerts and the paid concerts are ridiculous like everyone was ready to pay like nobody wants to watch the free thing anymore and that's why instagram even now they've started putting on their instagram live i think it comes out in the next week or so there will be a donate button or a pay whatever on instagram live. how come yeah. how come though how because, come they think that like like the quality of of the music is going to go up if it's a paid concert? If I, if I don't, I don't know if that's I don't know what the, the 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 reasoning is behind it. But the thing is, most of the artists switched to paying, and I, I'll I'll find the article and send it to you guys after this because it was written by the guy who, who runs Dice, and he was saying like he was shocked to see that suddenly everything that was paid was you know, make, getting a lot more streams than the ones that weren't. I, I don't know. Can, if, I, can if, I offer an insight of why I think that is? Yeah, go, go. Um, from a consumer's perspective, um, 
I've got disposable income now that I would usually spend at a concert that I'm not spending. And so if there's an artist that I like, or if there's a concert series that I like, whereas it was an 80 pound ticket and now it's a couple just to stream online and to support, I have that money to spend. I will support that artist because fans of music, people who really do care will support you. If you have a fan base, if you have your friends, whatnot, like I will go online. Like if I can't make it to a show, um, I would stream that person's live performance. It's just like when you go to a friend's concert, you'll buy the merch, which is, you know, because that's, that's the way you support these days. Because let's face it, the streams are not going to make you any money anytime soon, especially if you're an indie artist. Um, it, it's just not. You just need the material out there because the music is promoting your live shows. But now, like Adam was saying, since there are no live shows, what's the point in putting out the music? Well, you put out the music so that you can at least explore these avenues of monetization right now because it's all trial and error. No one knows what the hell they're doing right now. Everyone is trying and it's survival of the fastest, not the fittest. So you try and you fail and you keep trying because there are people uh, like Scratch Bastard, one of the best Scratch DJs on the planet, has this thing where you go on his website, you can sign up as a VIP member to Bastard's Barbecue, and it's a $10 a month thing, and you get access to you know, his playlist, some exclusive content, some videos. All of these things are usually free, and you can get them for free if you want. I mean, look, you can pirate anything digitally, but if you want to support, you'll put in that 10 bucks because you're like, you know what? I want to support. So... I would say put out that music and try to like I've heard of Dice and I've seen it in action and I would actually um, I was even telling Anthony when he did his Bader Jam Sessions InstaFest I was like dude put a link because I would pay for it just to support because I'm not spending my monthly entertainment budget on they anything do, yeah I, I, would put do, it I had a lot of people who just just for little context I have a lot of people who told me to put a link so that you know, we can we can make uh, you know money or whatever. And I I knew that the issue was not there. The issue was if I did that, then I would have uh, I would have how do you call it? I would have um, you know like uh, I have to distribute the money to everyone. You know, and the big problem we have in Lebanon is you can't distribute to people outside of Lebanon. So I would have a massive problem to deal with. And in my head, I was just like, either way, right at that at that moment. I felt that the money wasn't necessarily an issue because I don't think anyone knew what the hell was happening. Like it was the beginning of COVID and we were like, what the hell? Then within like the first five, six weeks, everyone started realizing that this is a bit of a long-term thing at that time. And then now it's obviously the context has changed three months later. So 12 weeks later, people are seeing things differently and it will change again one month from now. And it keeps changing and changing and changing. But, so but still what you did was you were the first um festival to to do that no, the first I, I brand would... that did that from what i know from what i've seen around here and it was it was just brilliant and it was no, there, were, there were and... I, I know that there were other people doing live live shows the only no, live shows are one thing but you were the first one to aggregate everyone and put time zones in different countries and kind of turn it into like an instagram festival at least yeah, yeah, yeah. from what i've been yeah, seeing it was amazing by the way thank you for having me involved thank you yeah, sorry, it, no. was, it was very cool <laughs> And, and like I said, this was you acting fast and not getting bogged down with the details of, okay, shit, is it going to take me three weeks to figure out the money thing? Okay, whatever. Let's just get the music out there. Yeah. Um, and, and that's what everyone's doing. Like, I think it was Roskilde Music Festival just launched tickets for their 2021 concert and they were sold out. People yeah. don't even know what the lineup is. They don't have a lineup, but people just knew that they were going to go to the concert. They wanted to support it. They've got the disposable income because everyone is is not spending on entertainment. Yeah. And you've got your the budget is there. So what I'm trying to say is if exploit all these, like I didn't know about Instagram's thing, but yeah. I think it's great and I think everyone should jump on that. I think there's also a factor which I don't think many this was something that I considered a lot during during the Instagram fest thing, is uh the, the duration of each performance and this was something that I, I told, as all of you know, I was telling you guys 15, 20 minutes, so three or four songs, because I don't think anyone today has the, 
the span yeah, to, to hold yeah. more than that. And it was funny because I had a lot of people who are professionals that I've never even dreamt of them speaking about what I'm doing, like writing, oh, check what these guys are doing. What do you think? Is it better to go for a one hour thing or is it better to go for many short, uh, you know, little performances? I'm still up to the idea that fast content is what, what feeds at the moment. So I went for the short one. It, it worked in its own way. Um, so yeah, just to go, just to, to end on this point of concerts and, and uh, income, I do think that for the time being, the mindset should be, if you want to believe that, is you're building your brand right now. All of, all, each one of you is a brand. So you're building it right now in your name, in your whatever, in your posting online and whatever. I mean, Adam, I, I found you. I'd never heard of Adam before. Like I, I, I just mistakenly was looking for artists performing at different things. And I found that there was a hand pan festival that was going over 24 hours. And then I looked at it and I looked at who's the person behind it. And I saw your name and I was like, shit, that's a Lebanese guy. Then I went and I wrote out to you and it turns out that you've never, like, you've never grown up and lived here. You won't, you know, and we spoke and then, you know, so it's just that built your brand name. And for me personally today, I'm, I'm a concert promoter. Like, I know that when you're in Beirut, I want to organize your show for you in Beirut. Like, it's little tiny things like this. It's just like, in my mind, I'm like, it's these moments where you realize that people are building their brand name now. Like, now they're doing it, whether right. they want it or not, you know, by consistently doing little things here and there. Here, like and I'm, just, I'm seeing it, like, I'm seeing it with everyone. And I'm just like, it's super cool to watch who's evolving. And the ones who are silent are, as you guys have said before, are not going to be you know, top of the tongue when, when things reopen. So it's just, I don't know if that's a good thing or not, but it, it yeah. is. Yeah. I was just making the point. Uh, go, oh, ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go uh, ahead. I was going to, uh, uh, you go ahead. I'll talk uh, oh, sorry, I was going to say, look, as well as income, like it is a hard time. People are losing people. People are at home and they're not working. So people want to be entertained. And music is like one of the best forms of entertainment. Everyone loves music. It's, you know, it crosses boundaries. So, that's why now I think it is a great time to put music out because people yeah. at home, they'll listen to it. They'll take it the message and they'll connect more with people. So whilst oh, yeah. we're part side, there's a lot of benefits to this time as well, as you said, about connecting with people and building your brand and networking. So, yeah. Right, right. I Don't misinterpret what I said earlier, like putting out music is uh, futile. It's not futile. I'm saying that we need to, we can't be thinking about the way people were doing it five months ago. Yeah. We need to be thinking about how people are doing it right now because we're COVID is an era. This is yeah. a new era, yeah. just like the digital streaming era was an era that, but now that digital streaming era is going to be changed by COVID right now. So we have to really yeah. think about how uh, is digital streaming live performances is still streaming. So yeah, just keep that. I want to add to what the three of you said is that uh, why are you doing music? What do you do right now? When COVID started, music festivals on Instagram were booming. Now they calm down. What's next? No one knows. Maybe it's going to be Instagram paying festivals like Anthony is saying. But one thing that your consumer is always interested in is your brand, your narrative. Who are you as an artist? So, okay, you're producing music. Tell me about it. I want to hear about it. So everything that's going on right now, if you want to get more people involved and engaged is... Tell me something, tell me something through through and inspire me because people just need any kind of hope or any kind of trigger that might just get them through a day to day. Yeah, totally agree. Jana, Jana how does has this like how does it has how has it impacted you as a producer? Like for the artist it's clear because the main income is concerts and suddenly that's vanished for the time being. But how on, on in, like on an income basis, on an income basis, I didn't make any money. Uh, like I'm not making money right now, but I was working on a project that is like not very well paid, but, but that's fine. Uh, but if anything, like to add to everything that you guys said, I, I actually took the time to, to, work on, to, to work on music. I actually took the time to actually to practice bass. I, I'm a pianist and I was practicing bass like the whole time. And I actually took the time to work on sound. Uh, when I sing sound the synthesis and and uh, and I think, like Dana said, like you, you used a very uh, a very important word this, the narrative um, um, and 
I, I know for a fact people that I've worked with before were questioning themselves, questioning their music, questioning what they want to say, etc. One of them wants to express herself in, an, in, a, in a language she doesn't usually use in, 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 her, in her music just because she's feeling things uh, differently. Uh, changing, ch like kind of polishing her narrative and changing that, uh, changing that, that basically that, that image that she has of herself so she can put on, uh, put on a, a, an image that is more in line with, with, with whatever she wants to, you know, where the, whatever she wants to perform later. And I think that was like a good time to do this because you kind of, you, you kind of, you know, pause and, 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 and think about stuff. But right now, I think the whole world is in a, in a state of urgency when it comes to, when it comes to, us. people are not getting paid anymore. Uh, like Dana said, also you have a decline when it comes to, to virtual things. Like Adam said, uh, uh, we, are, we are in a new era. There is a little bit, like people are a little bit lost. Uh, and to, because because they don't have they don't they they don't really know what's what can what can and cannot work because they don't have uh, you know pre previous thing to to fall on um, uh, touring is not going to be the same even if they open the the cities because because it will depend also on 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 airports there's uh, so many factors that 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 are changing the plans and the the strategy when it comes to to making music and producing music and, and releasing music and also playing and also playing live yeah. uh, but um i think that's where there's an opportunity yeah ma, ma, this is this is where you come in where you come in and you say uh this is the situation uh let's uh, let's release this music this way and let's uh, do this co the concert that way see you you have nothing to lose see if it works and and build on that this yeah, is where you come in yeah because uh, we're all on, i feel that now suddenly it's a it's a other than as you said every that no, nobody has anything previous to go back to just to look back and say oh they did it this way so it worked i mean it's, it's technically been three months since the lockdown, but the virus has been here since end of December. And um, you look at it and you're just like, well, maybe suddenly a little a project like Beirut Jam Sessions or a little artist, like I don't know who or I don't know what, were suddenly on the same level playing field as the biggest players out there because they have no clue and we have no clue. And Sam said something earlier, it's uh, survival of the fastest, which could also apply as well to musicians, whoever can catch on to anything that's kind of not, not to say that there's a wave of creativity, but when there's something happening there to just like test it out, as you've been saying, you know, we test it out, we see what happens. It works great, doesn't work fine, next, you know, like it's fine to test everything out now anyways. And I hope like, I mean, I, I only see opportunity right now in terms of we do stuff where none of us are gonna make money off any of our projects right now but it will, it will show up. However, I do think, to go back to whatever we were saying earlier, if, you, if your concern is income, then look at, I mean, you realize we're in, I don't know, eight, we're in 11 different locations. I have arguably the worst internet in, on the planet Earth right now, and I can see all of you perfectly. So imagine you guys, you know, going on your, if you had 11 people, um, show up to pay ten dollars for you to play for 15 minutes i mean that's not bad man. like 15 minutes is not bad so i'm just thinking like that that's the formula now i think it's keep people entertained for that those little periods some of you have quite big followings on social media i mean it's uh, it's the sort of thing you can you can think of i mean and there are for lebanon there are payment gateways that work um for for others when you're abroad it's it's easier anyway everything is is virtual virtually works outside I mean, you guys have paypal you have all the ticketing platforms possible you could, i mean you can work i think it, it can and, and yeah we... what, was, what was that platform you mentioned dice dice.com yeah, i think i don't know if it's .com or .co.uk but um oh, it's not dice.com no, dice.co.uk sign in the group oh uh, yes okay thank you kemi that's dice.co.uk does not look like it. That's it either. 
One second. I'm a computer instead. One second. I'm going to sign it for you. Hold on. One second. Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm going to work twice. Fast. It's dice.fm. Dice yeah, there you go. Dice.fm. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that, that, that's the one that, that's working in, well, in countries outside of here. But even, even, even then, I mean, this platform, Zoom, is like really good compared to what we've had to deal with bit, like 10 years ago or five years ago, or, or even Instagram Live was a catastrophe, in my opinion, like in terms of, uh, you know, the streaming of it itself. It's really bad. Like, it's really, really bad. Um, can, uh, can can you get money uh, like on Facebook? Can you can you get paid in Lebanon? At the moment, only if you have that what they call the fresh account. Uh, only fresh accounts. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the ones right. who don't, 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 have an yeah, for those who don't live in Lebanon, uh, just so you know, we have a, like an insane economic crisis here that makes absolutely no sense, and so like we can't retrieve our money and stuff like that so we're just like stuck and we're like okay what the hell do we do so anyway just, that's uh, like i'll give you an example I, I i needed to get paid for the project i had just finished and and uh, and uh so i sent it to a paypal like like my friend's paypal account in in london and then another friend that is stuck there is going to bring the money uh cash to me <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, it's a, like it's a whole it's a whole ordeal so so how to monetize when it uh, when it has to do with uh, lebanon that's like uh one of the things so just to tell you one of the things that i was planning to do because this week is the, the eight year anniversary of beirut jam session so i wanted to do it for this week but then i said i'll leave it maybe i'll do it in a couple of weeks so um what i what i was going to do is put an instagram uh, do a concert on Zoom where I have three different performers, each one for 15, 20 minutes or something like that. And they go, they buy their ticket on Ehjoz. Ehjoz is a ticketing platform that's here in Lebanon. They buy their ticket on Ehjoz. Once they get it, they get the link to the Zoom like I sent it to you with the password. And okay, so you that will only be, it will only be sent like five minutes before. So there's no room for you know, blasting it around. And when you're the host of a, of a call on Zoom, you can mute out everyone and you can remove their cameras as well. <laughs> so that's, it won't be like the performer is looking and he has a hundred people watching. He'll be seeing him or herself, or they'll be seeing themselves perform. And uh, in the end, you'll see all the people who attended and all the people who paid. Also on Zoom, uh, even if they do spread the code out, uh, they, they wait in a, in the lobby for you to admit them. So if they're just not on your list, you can just not admit them, right? If you have that activated. Uh, you, you, there's the option of it, but like here yeah. what I did was like, I, when I invited you guys, it was just open. So everyone put the password and started popping up. So um, yeah, I there's think- another option just so you know that if you can host a meeting and people will wait and you'll get a notification and it'll ask you if you want to admit them into that meeting. Yeah. So it might just be something that you would find useful. Yeah. There's also a way you can, have the Zoom call, but it can be streamed to your Facebook page in case you wanted it like more people to watch. Because I've done that with a group in America, they've done that. So it's like this, but then uh, the main person performing was showing on their Facebook page. Okay. Yeah, there you go. But then how do we monetize it from Facebook, though? That's the question. Oh, you can still put your links up um, on your Facebook like page. Like a PayPal link or something? Yeah. Uh, I use a program called the OBS a streaming software, and then Facebook will generate a stream key or YouTube generate stream key and you can actually put text on your screen or have multi-cam nice quality audio it's a very good streaming uh platform yeah, it's, not really a pla it's, not, it's not a streaming platform it's a uh streaming software host? it's like an overlay mm -hmm. type of thing where you can so what was the thirds and bumpers obs OB OBS. obs uh and then this this is how do you get good quality stream i wanted to say gerard I want to hear from you. And Renoir is silent as well. I want to hear from you guys too. Uh, I think it's just, it's just interesting that uh, we, uh, in this business, uh, we are today in the customization business, like 
choosing to buy a ticket or not or choosing when to uh, watch a concert or not is uh, is there in a trial and error from uh, this technological point of view because uh, like now we're discussing how to monetize and people there in their offices doing uh, like people on zoom or on twitter or, or these platforms they are working on uh, customizing how people want to spend their time and their money on the on many businesses and and this in, including the music business so um, i don't know it's just, just like an interesting uh, conversation going from pre content to brand image and uh, what to do with the content now and the post content thing so uh, that's the, that's just my general opinion about what's what i'm listening to Yes, I I have um, two points I want to talk about. The first one, um, tomorrow I have my first official uh, Zoom concert. It's for international uh, internations.org. I'm doing it for free. I don't know what the, they're raising money for something, but I don't know. Anyways, um, it's there are already a hundred people registered. Uh, it's going to be quite an experience for me because I haven't done this. Uh, this is the first time I do it. And it's quite different because uh, we've already logged in two times with the host to do the sound check. So it was a whole thing for me to also make sure I have the right sound with the right, uh, uh, vid uh, you know, like uh, video quality. And uh, uh, when, when I was doing the sound check, uh, the host was also adding people to make sure that the sound is good enough. It was so serious to a point that I almost felt like I seriously, I'm going to have a concert and it's even giving me the same rush as if I'm really going to have a concert tomorrow. So I think this is where I have a feeling this is where we're heading. Maybe for the next couple of months, we will see. Uh, that's one thing. And I'll let you know, Anthony, how this will go um, after tomorrow. Yeah, send us the uh, link. Send us the link so we can... If, are we allowed to register or not? It's for, the, for their community. It's in Morocco. But I will check if uh, they've been doing um, a lot of uh, commercials for their groups. But I don't know if people from outside their community can join. I'll, um, I'll let you know if so. Okay. Well, the pressure is real because if you make a mistake yeah. on a live stream, then not only it's worse than a real concert because in a real concert agree. you make a mistake and it just goes into the air and recorded. everyone will forget. But exactly, it's recorded. recorded. <laughs> but it's so exciting. Like, for me, it's just, like, just like live TV. Yeah, you, know, you fuck up, you fuck up. You need to yeah. like get your shit together and get true. the get the show going. Yes, true. <laughs> and another <laughs> thing about like being active uh, and uh, you know not releasing but maybe like being um, active on social media putting music out there posting before COVID um, I used to be so picky and uh, about what to uh, post and I, I used to want to have like my perfect track with the perfect music video that goes with it and the perfect pre post and after post and it was just like you know um, for me it was the it was the the the, the image of, of the artists, this whole Instagram, Facebook. Whereas during Corona and now, um, I learned that it shouldn't be like that. I should just go and play whatever I feel like, even if it's just for one minute. And I noticed that people are a lot more interacting and engaging with me. So that's just to go back to that point. And the last point, and this is gonna go way uh, to the very beginning of our conversation regarding looking for producers uh, and what, as an artist, what do, I, I've been looking after the producers um, and, and what I look for in a producer um, was the sound mainly. For example, I'll give a, a very, um, you know, like legitimate example. Last month, um, I, I randomly heard a very, very nice track on Café de Anatolia. And I looked up the producer, emailed him. He was Greek and I you know, told him what I do, blah, blah. And um, we worked together on a track. We collaborated, it was free of charge because you know, he wanted to collaborate. We did it uh, uh, and we gave it to Anatolia. The thing, just to tell you that the, the experience was that uh, not every single uh, uh, track or every single production that the producer works on uh, will will have the same outcome for every artist. I was very happy with the production that 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 uh, we did, but it wasn't exactly, or, or it wasn't maybe the same um, uh, mood that I had heard from him. 
Um, also, like I, I was looking for producers that had hit tracks or maybe uh, that went uh, with the highest numbers of streaming online and so on. Uh, point is what, like Dana was saying, it's about uh, getting along, you know, being able to uh, have the, 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 the good combination in terms of music and production, especially for me because I compose my music. Uh, so I really need the person that will understand exactly what I want and so on. So I, I used to look for the sound, but maybe for now, I would look for different things when I'm, look, when I'm searching for a producer for me. Uh, can, can I take this one? Sure. Like, um, uh, it's very interesting that w what you said. So, 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 so there, was this, there, there was this guy and you liked this, uh, this, uh, this song uh, that he produced and you wanted to work with him. So did, did, how did you go about it? Like, how was, how was the interaction when it comes to the music? Not like, how, how did you get to him? Like, how was the interaction when it comes to the music? Did you, did, were, you, were you telling him what in the song you like or what mood, what mood did you like? And, and, did you, and did you compare it to your own music or you, or, or you gave him carte blanche in the collaboration? Yes, very good question, Jana. The th thing is, first of all, just to clarify, he already does the genre of music that I do. He does the ethno-electronic down-tempo. So right. we're already in the same loop of music and, and identity here. It's not yeah. like he's a producer. I don't know. You know what I mean? So that's one. Two, uh, I did give him a carte blanche. Definitely like gave him hints of sounds and beats that I liked. And I, and now the difficult part also was that he wasn't in, in the same city. He lived in, in Athens, I'm in Beirut. I had to go here and record in studios and send out. And this was a bit difficult because of course, when you're together in the studio, you can talk and have more of a connection. It's strange, yeah. So that, that part was already difficult. Definitely gave him a carte blanche in terms of, of uh, sounds and everything. Uh, but we, we were already very close to, to the, the, the type of music that we both work on and like and, and uh, produce. Okay, so, so you went to some, okay, all right. But the result wasn't, wasn't exactly what you were, what, what it, it, you thought. It was okay, it was okay, it was good, but he couldn't reach to exactly the, the, the level of, the tr of his previous tracks, let's say. And maybe that's because I was a canoon where he had a, a, a duduk in the track that I like, you know, so, so he had a different instrument that he had collaborated with. Maybe that was also uh, a challenge. Um, maybe he wasn't familiar enough with the instrument. Uh, also like a, a pure oriental, um, he's into Mediterranean music, like the sounds, but uh, Oriental was very new to him. Um, it I has its positives and negatives. It has its positive and negative. I think when it's very precise like this, it, maybe for, for somebody like you, maybe don't go with someone who actually does exactly the music that you, that you love, but somebody who has a little bit more of a spectrum in terms of, uh, in terms of production. Because you seem to, to, first of all, you're using an instrument that is, that is one, of, like we, we call it anun la no, it's, it's, it's basically the, the, the piano of, of Arabic music. Absolutely. Uh, and it's Absolutely. extremely extremely hard to master and at the same time it's it's very rich it's, it's extremely rich and also yeah. if you spent it's if you spent years perfecting perfecting your your playing on this instrument it means that you know a lot about arabic music and also yeah. you you're developing something that is very 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 precise but then it's you twenty wonder, plus years, Jana, just for, for the I, rest I, of you. I, yeah, I, I'm aware. <laughs> I'm aware of how much time uh, yeah. uh, it takes. So, so mastering your instruments, you're the master of your instrument. Like in, in this case, no, no, uh, no producer is going to come and tell you, uh, uh, ah, but you can play it. Uh, can, they're going to ask you, can you play it this way? They're not going to yeah. tell you, oh, but maybe you can play it this way. They're going to yeah. ask you what you can do with your anun so it can kind of like uh, fit a genre of music. So you mm. need somebody who, who is in down-tempo electronic music. And you're yeah. bringing the uh, uh, an, Anun mastership in it. So it becomes True. a collaboration more True. than a production. And it depends, on your, and it depends on your sound references. Yeah, yeah and it, you, can have, you can have as a reference an Anun player that you love, 
but you also can have as a reference like a, a series of a series of electronic down tempo uh, music that has nothing to do with absolutely that, that, that you love. and you can also be true to what you what 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 uh, how you feel the music you're going to feel the music differently than 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 somebody true. who has a greek repertoire in mediterranean music and Maybe. actually to prove your point, I'm sorry, I, I cut you. Uh, the second track, we collaborated in two tracks. The second track was a, 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 a Greek song that they, uh, they, they came up with and they wanted me to play. So they yeah. sent me the that one was much better turned out much better because it was their special because it's so more so more comfortable in this and also so, and also yeah. was like okay I want you to collaborate with yeah, I want you on my sound but yeah, for you this was our deal. Yeah, for you to develop your sound, you need a, like a, somebody who, who, who listens to music on a broader way and, and leave you and, and ask a lot of questions about like your instrument, but leave, leave, that, leave that intact within a, within, a, within a word that like when you listen to it is going to be innovative for you. It's, it's, not, it's not somebody who's, who's uh, yeah like you you need you need more of a Rick Rubin basically in terms yeah. of you know what I mean? somebody somebody who can who can be like ah this is cool what you're doing maybe strip it down a little bit uh, mm -hmm. uh how about how about this do you like this mood and then you're creating yeah. a mood and a sound palette and a mood where your instrument is like it's is is the main uh, is the main ingredient so yeah. I, I would suggest for you to go more in that direction with a producer Thank you, Jana. Very interesting. It's, Thank it's you. Very, it's very, it's, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's very hard. Like, I'm, it's not hard, but it's, it's, uh, it's a very delicate balance uh, True. production. And, True. and it really depends on the person. Like, I know, I know producers uh, that, 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 that would like, that want to impose their sound on, on somebody's music. And sometimes it's yeah. fantastic, but yeah. sometimes it's yeah. Sometimes it doesn't click at all with the, yeah. and I know yeah. and I know producers that are very much in the background and also mm -hmm. that can be good and bad. But like uh, it's it's a conversation as long as there's a lot of questions and yeah. also references and also where when you when you feel that you are thinking the same way because music is True. also like a thought. It's it's a story. You're telling a story True. with your instrument, so you're thinking the same way. Uh, in terms of where you want to go with that story. True. And then you absolutely. have the elements. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Jean. Like, for example, Beatrice, you can think about your music. I don't know how you think about your music, but like you can, you can, you can come from it from a, from a, from a video perspective. You can of course. Think, yeah, like it, it depends. Um, like if you're using another artistic media me, medium like your your chain of thought it can be completely different and maybe your my first uh, exploration was actually on a soundtrack for a documentary a friend of mine was uh, directing and i'm like let's try to do the soundtrack and do a theme song for that documentary and let it be a test also for me in music and we did a video with just some footage i had b-roll on my computer um and th this was actually the beginning of, you know, me realizing that, yeah, I like music. I should do that. I have stuff to say. Um, yeah, but thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a way of thinking about the music that, uh, like, uh, that, that makes maybe some, some people think, uh, think of it with colors and images and, and, and kind of storytelling. Some people go with arrangements. Some people go with, with a certain instrument. Some people go with the mood. Uh, some people start with 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 a certain name. Some people go with a genre. Um, I'm talking to Kemi because you said you do R and B, <laughs> and uh, some people change genres like Z. Uh, uh, just, just but but at the end of the day, you're 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 also using all of all of these tools to tell to 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 say something, to say something to yourself, to put it out there. Or some people are extremely ex excellent instrumentalists, like whatever whatever it is collaborations is all about is is more about what you want from the other person when it comes to production but also how how this person can enhance your music 
uh, uh, especially especially when it's first project and especially when you're when you're starting uh, when you're starting up it's it's somebody who's who's helping you shape a sound and somebody who's helping you shape uh, shape more than a sound nowadays since we were talking about since we we're talking about uh, 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 videos narrative and all of that like uh, it's an extension of the music itself but like yeah. when you have lyrics uh, especially or or even when you when you're when you're using like a very melodic uh, percussive instrument etc like you're you're you're, you're, you're the, the extension of the music is going to be the music video because you're creating a mood and and who you are and how you express yourself and 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 all of that uh, so so yeah like I, I think when it comes to artist development when it comes to production it's 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 a very it's it's a thin line between between uh, opening opening the, uh, somebody somebody's uh, mind and ears to uh, uh, some to to new thing or different thing and then feeding off of it and 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 put it back but it's a it's a very much of a back and forth it's not an impose like it's not like you're imposing something unless the guy you know unless unless the person uh, 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 is is making beats and putting those beats online and is like uh, you know take the beats do whatever you want with them and then and then voila you, you you know exactly what they're they're where they're going with their sound and then that's it but you know unless unless it's uh, unless you're working with that person because you want to do this music and you want them to do it and then and then you and and yeah, and then you interpret it. It's a different thing. But if you're composing, uh, it's a very delicate balance. Okay. Sorry, I was just going to suggest just a quick one. one. Just a quick one. We have we have we have 15 minutes left, so let's just do a Q and A. Uh, whatever quick questions you guys might have for for Jana or for any of us, um, or if you want to go back on something. Uh, so yeah, whoever has any questions, just just go for it. I was just going to ask, so the natural pro progression these days of a musician is to become a producer, you'd say? The, the natural production, like it, it, it also depends on how, like, I, I think not, not in particular, not in particularly, but like if we're talking about independent music or, or music done, like, or, or somebody who's like, okay, let's take, let's take uh, your, your project, for example. Uh, 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 do, do you play by yourself, or do you play with people, or how do you and what and what what's your sound basically? What's uh, what's your genre? So it's a bit of both, and you know I'm not very consistent because you know I do it just whatever I you know I get inspired by something and I do a project in this time period. But typically, what I do, I record most of the stuff, and then you know I do the mixing, I use synths, and then one of the band members is trained as an audio engineer. So he helps with like mastering and things like that. So I learned like over years kind of, you know, like an apprenticeship and working in a studio like two years ago, like an actual, with an actual producer, I learned how to use Cubase. So that's what I do now. But I feel like I, you know, over time I became better and knowing how I want things to sound, it empowered me. You know, before yeah. I would have something in my head or playing and then when you don't connect, that's why, it, why it's so important to connect with the producer you want to work with you feel like it's just not sounding right and i've had this experience before so when i you know learned how to do you know the basic mixing putting filters over time i felt like okay i can my sound is sounding better the genre is finding itself more it's more what i had in mind it's less but of course i still feel that people you know study this this professionals for a reason right so I know it can definitely get better, but it's something I feel like I'm, you know, I'm, no, I'm in no rush. So I'm developing myself into getting there, like as a kind of, as my natural course in, in music. It's just like at one point, at some point, I want to be like, you know what? This sounds like exactly like I wanted it to sound. And mm -hmm. that's the challenge, I feel. Okay, so, so basically that's part of your musician journey, I would say. Because you're using you're you're using your mixing skill and and Cubase and all of this to to write music and then to actually shape the sound that you want to to yeah. to shape and 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 say the message that you want to say in a certain way. Like your questions since the beginning are very technical questions. Like you want to get to a certain sound or etc. Or maybe not. Or maybe you're 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 discovering you're discovering with 
with what you have in terms of technology, uh, what type of song, yeah, and you're doing trial and error to, 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 to see what type of song that you, wh where you want to get to. So yeah, you're, you're producing your own music. That's 100% that's, uh, true. Uh, uh, in, 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 in your case, it can be, it can be like, if, if you want to, right now, not later, uh, uh, right now work with a producer, it's more, it's, it's more saying, uh, listen, I'm, I'm trying to get th there. I don't know how to get there. Can you help me out? Uh, can you help me getting there? Um, uh, but honestly, like to tell you the truth, uh, um, uh, maybe maybe in your case, because also like how you make your music and how etc. Maybe what you need is, is is tips more than more than collaborating with somebody uh, 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 for for now until you're like. You're like, okay, I want to, I want, I, I want another sound for my, for, for my set, or I want to, I, I want to go like on, on, until like the collaboration becomes actually part of the music itself, like until they, like, it's, it's really like a collaboration, or until like, just you, you know, you can get another set of ears to, 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 to tell you, uh, okay, the EQ on your voice, you can, you, you know, yeah, you, can, you can take down the, on the five hundred hertz. The arrangement and the process, that's where I, I, I really enjoy it. You know, the production part, I feel like process. when I'm, you know, having someone help, I'm like, no, this is, the, why are you doing this? This is what I want to be doing. I want to choose when to, you know, take out the beat, put it back. This is. Yeah, yeah. you're like the process of it right now. You're, yeah. you're into the process of it. So you're, 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 you're you don't you don't need to work with a producer now you just need to have you just need like you just need to ask questions to with people who have like you know like a technical if if you have a technical question you can ask or if you if you if you listen to something and you're like shit how did this like how does the synth sounds like this on this album etc like those questions but or 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 where the you know you want to discover your 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 music is also you're making music after what you've discovered and you're making music with what you've discovered etc 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 uh, it's, 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 which is totally, totally great and totally fine. Like, this is your journey right now. Uh, so yeah, I wouldn't like, for example, if, if I'm with you, I'll be like, okay, can I listen to a track and I listen to the track and then, and then when you have questions about the track and like, oh, I wanted to do this and not that I'll give you tips. Like, this is how I would work with you right now. Uh, unless, unless I see something in it and I'll be like, have you, have you thought no, about know. going in that direction? And then it's a collaboration, but yeah. Cool, thank you. So it's a different approach than Renoir, for example, or Beatrice even. Cool, cool. I, I like, I like where this is going. Uh, who, who has any, any more, uh, any more questions? Come on. I wouldn't say question, but uh, topic of yeah, yeah. debate, if you want. Uh, the importance of communication between the producer and the artist or the collaborator. And I think this is where sometimes it all goes wrong and you're not reaching what you want because you say blue, I say turquoise. And I think this is where, as producers, references are really important. Like, tell me, like, that, that, the color of that sky, that picture, that's what I want. And then I'm like, oh, okay, I thought you wanted the color of my shirt. So this tiny little miscommunication will just either make it or break it in the project. And I think when the artist talks and talks and talks and talks, that's when we understand better. The more you talk to us, it's, it's, it's heaven. It's, let us be your therapist because that's what Are you sure, Diana? That's talking about aliens. I just want to add something. 100 <laughs> I just want to say shout out to, to all of you guys because I think like we have this passion to do what we like and stuff. And shout out to Dana because we started out something last week, a new collaboration between uh, me and her, and I hope it's going to lead to somewhere. We had, I had a lot to say, and uh, when she said, talk to us, let it be your therapy, I think I poured my heart out to her. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah Andy, you've funny. unleashed a lot of collaborations with me, so thank you. <laughs> That's cool. Glad to hear that. 
Um, okay, so yeah, Kemi. I don't really have a question, but it's been lovely to meet everyone. I don't know what he was going to do after, but is it possible for everyone to put like their links in the chat so we can like communicate after? That's all right with you. Uh, normally, what I'll do, if I, I'll prefer if you guys do it in here by chat, because what I do is I try and put like send an email to everyone, but then I realize. I don't know all your Instagrams by heart and I have to go back and be like, okay, I'm searching for this and then type it down and, it. and, I, and I, I'd end up putting everyone in touch and I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like, you know, it's, uh, so yeah, I think just, just put in your, your, your stuff down there and, uh, and whoever wants to reach out could be cool. Um, it looks like we're, we're almost done. Does anyone have any, any like last, uh, last pieces of, you know, advice or questions or yeah. I had a question one thing that interested me was you know and it's something I find challenges because of my social circles I don't know a lot of people in cinema video things like that is you know I've always wanted to kind of collaborate with someone that makes video and try to do music kind of with what Bea was saying um, so I don't know if there's no, but you has a very big smile on her face. Yeah, yeah. but you, you know, Roy, like one of the things that you would be very surprised with is there are many, many, many videographers, many movie makers out there who are more than willing to to work with musicians. Like as I was I was mentioning earlier, the, the, those um, the the French band that I'm going to work with on three songs, and they were uh, my my uh, advice to them was create three tracks, you know, create a piece of content, film. And I always use this example, but I think it would be awesome. I was like, film a cockroach for four minutes walking in slow motion and it's super interesting. I'm like, that's content, like, you know, and it doesn't matter. But the thing is when I, I was saying that, and right after the conversation, I was talking to a friend of mine who happens to be a director who lives in New York. And I was speaking to her and this and that. And she's like, she's like, I want that. I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I'm going to take that project and I'm going to do the three videos. I was like, really? She's like, yeah. I'm like, sure. You know, so you would be surprised. Like people are, there, there's a certain, we've always been scared to ask as people, I think in general, just ask yeah. like you, whoever you ask, you'd be surprised of how much people are just willing to collaborate. You know, just so you know, you know how Jana ended up on this, this talk. It was last Friday, I, I was with her at a friend's place and we were discussing the, just randomly discussing. I was like, I was like, you know, would you want to be part of this? And she's like, yeah, of course. I'm like, you want to talk like as a producer and stuff? And she's like, yeah. And I was initially, I, I wouldn't have asked her. Like, I was like, should I, should I? I have a whole list of people that's so massive and everyone, I'm just like, who should, like, how, like, you know, I'm, I'm worried, should I ask? Should I ask? Then I always say like, just, just like Nike, Nike knew it all along, just do it. Like, you know, <laughs> ask yeah. and yeah, just and, and cross medium collaborations. Yeah. People love that. Yeah, absolutely. Because you want to explore your music. Somebody else want to explore their, 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 their visuals that you want to, it's, it's a very interesting for people. Cross and like, like Hinoa was saying earlier, sometimes it won't be great and that's fine. Like it's not, yeah, it, it, will exactly. never, it will never be the, the polished product. I mean, I'm telling you from as someone who's filmed, uh, who's produced over 150 pieces of sessions for Beirut Jam Sessions. I've been there on every shoot with every artist. I've done everything from A to Z. I can tell you, I like, I like I'm convinced of like two of them, like 100% convinced. I'm like only two of them. And that's not to say that I don't like the others. I love them. I love them to pieces, but 100% convinced where I'm just like, wow, I, le I left the thing and I'm like, this is unbelievable what we've just done. It's only been like twice in eight years. It's you just like ask. And I think people are willing, like everyone wants to collaborate. Everyone. Wants to Anthony, I want to say something really, really quick. First of all, is Adam still with us? Yeah, I think he is. Okay, Adam, I've played a, a track with, uh, with background uh, music, just hand pan, and I've been playing it, all, I've played it all summer last year. It was always, it used to be always the opening of my live gig. Um, we usually, we used to start at sunset, where I used to play at a place called Odin, and we used to start at sunset, and I've always picked this track that had only hand pan as background music, and I put Enun with it, and I cannot tell you 
the reaction of people. I have even have a short video on Instagram. I want to see if I can send it to you so you can hear it and see this combination. Beautiful. Um, and uh, Anthony, just to comment on your, uh, on your point that that track that I was talking about, people loved it. Like normal people uh, sent me messages and it's getting, it's gotten already like uh, above a thousand streams on SoundCloud and I'm new on SoundCloud. So just to tell you that maybe for me, I was a little bit picky about what I wanted, but people loved it. Awesome. That's, that's the way to go, I think. I mean, you know, that's, you, you would be surprised. I mean, things... People just are ready to discover more than ever before. I don't know if yeah. you guys think the same, but I think, I mean, I've been listening to music that I never thought I'd listen to. I've been watching things I never thought I'd watch. I've been, yeah. I don't know, being introduced to people I never thought I'd be introduced to. So, so yeah, that's uh, that's how it's going, uh, guys. I think we're gonna wrap before it up. Before you end, one one thing, just so everyone knows, there's normally a conference called Medem that happens in Cannes this week. And yeah. they've opened it free for everyone on internet to join oh, cool. on all the talks. So I've been at it and I've been meeting a lot of artists and industry professionals. So just nice. go sign in and chat and connect with a lot of people. Nice. What is it? What is it, Dana? Can you write it? Can you yeah. write it? Yeah. Can you write? Guys, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the, the thing where I take a photo of us all. So give your biggest smile if you can, because I'm, I'm enjoying this. Oh, yeah, but I don't have enough for a light. Yeah, it's fine. You do. Everyone is fine. Everyone's good. I'm having a bad hair day. You're all good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much again. Um, you, have, you, have, uh, you have everyone's links uh, in here. So uh, just use them. If you have any questions, anytime, you know, I'm here at whatever you need. And uh, yeah, no. thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you so much. Bye, Bye, Bye. Thanks, Anthony. Bye.